Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over setting up a 2 PC stream with a capture card and everything you need to know to get things going. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. This video is aimed at setting up a 2 PC setup, but if you're new to streaming, this video will be much easier if you have a basic understanding of OBS first. If you're looking for a walkthrough of setting up OBS and basic OBS settings, I'll leave a link to a video in the description below to help you with that. In this example, I'll be using an Aver Media capture card, but this process will be the same whether you're using an Aver Media or Elgato capture card, they should be very similar. If your capture card has a 4K pass-through, you can just use the pass-through or use the duplicate display method. As long as you're okay with the pass-through hertz, like depends on your capture card. If you have a 4K 240Hz pass-through and you don't play super competitive games, this will be the easier of the two ways that I'll be going over. Now if you have something like an HD60 or an HD60 Plus from Elgato and you're only going to get 60Hz pass-through, but your monitor is let's say like a 144Hz panel and you want to play super competitively, cloning your display and or using the pass-through might not be what you want. I'll be covering how to set it up using the pass-through, the clone display, and the uncapped hertz with extended display and OBS so that you'll have lots of options depending on how you want your setup. A lot of people run it different ways. It'll give you three different ways that you can set this here up. So it depends on your needs. You can pick the one that best suits you. I just use the pass-through because like I said, if you have a 4K pass-through, that is fine. Especially where I don't play a lot of FPS games. I'm mostly just recording videos like this. And to be honest, it's absolutely fine. A little bit of latency back from when I'm writing text is unnoticeable. That being said, first way I'll do is the pass-through. This is the most commonly used for console streamers to stream from a console to a PC. But if you have a 4K pass-through and like I said, you're not playing competitively, then this will be fine. This is the way that I use it currently in my setup. For this, all you need to do is plug your HDMI cable from your gaming PC you want to record into the capture card in the streaming PC. And then all you need to do from there is run the HDMI cable from the capture card back to your monitor. That's all you will need to do. In OBS, all we'll need to do after everything's plugged in is click down here on the plus in your sources and we'll want to add a video capture device. Uh, most capture cards are going to show up as a video capture device so keep that in mind. Once it's here all we have to do is find our capture card. This will say either an Aver Media or it will say like Elgato depending on what you have. Just select the one that you have and click OK. You should see the screen pop up before you ever click it so you should know that it's working right away. We're just going to click on this here and go to transforms and fit to screen so that we can see everything that's going on. Now if you're running a 2 PC this will only have the video. It won't have the audio yet. So we'll have to sort that out here in a moment. So what we're going to do is go over to our gaming PC. Okay, once you're on the gaming PC, what we want to do is go down here to the sound, give it a right click and go to the open sound settings. This is going to open a panel and you want to click on the sound control panel. From here, we'll go to the recording tab and down to stereo mix. What we're going to do in here is click properties, go over here to the listen tab, make sure the listen to this device is selected and in the drop down menu select your monitor or your capture card. What it, it should show up as your capture card and then click OK. What this is going to do, this is going to duplicate your desktop sound that you're hearing in your headphones and it's going to duplicate that sound and it's going to push it through to your streaming computer. So this is how you'll have sound going through your HDMI cable that's connected to your capture card while well, still coming through your headphones. So you will need to set this here up if you want the sound to be there. Once we click OK, we should be able to go back to the other PC, click OK after you have it set, and then make sure you do a sound test. So go over to your other PC and play a sound. All right, and if you see it moving, that should be perfect. The next method is cloning the display. This is much better for latency than using the pass-through. Um, anytime you use pass-through, you are going to add some latency. So this is going to be a lot better for competitive shooting games and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you're setting this up. For this, we are going to need to connect a DisplayPort cable from our video card to our monitor. And then we're going to need to use the HDMI port that's on the video card to run an HDMI cord to the capture card in the streaming computer. After that's done, all we're going to need to do is make a few changes in the NVIDIA control panel. To do that, all we're going to need to do is over on your taskbar, right click the NVIDIA settings and open up the control panel. 
Once this here opens up, we're, we're going to scroll down to set up multiple displays. Okay, for this one here, it took me a little bit of messing around to actually get it. All you need to do is click on the display that you want and clone with. So if you want number one to be cloned with number two, you right click number one and click clone with. Once you click it, you should see your display extend over to your OBS. So when you look over at your streaming computer, you should see this here page now instead of a separate desktop. If I click this off, you'll see what I mean. So, okay, when you click extend and click apply, now you guys can see what's over here on the screen, but you can't see what's on my gaming screen. So now it's all out of order. So all we need to do is click clone with and pick three. That should make two and three and we're going to undo that because it's wrong. We need to clone with the big one there. Okay. And we're going to click clone with two. If you're not sure what monitors, which one you can click on the identify monitor in here. You can click the identify to make sure that you have the right monitors. So when you click on it, you can see this one's number two and I want to connect it with number one. So if number one comes up on the screen, the game comes up perfect. We click apply and this should make it. There we go. I messed up my screen a little bit there. That's okay. That's okay. It's just zoomed in. It's just zoomed in. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just because I'm video capturing in uh, 4k over on my other, on my other computer. So it's picking that up. Yours will not look like this. I have it super enlarged. If you do have issues like this here and you see it, you might want to go to your display settings, go down here and make sure that you pick 1920 by 1080 recommend it. It wants me to put it in 4k. When I put it in 4k, everything will look normal, but this is some of the problems that I had with the, the pass through. Okay. Everything looks normal. It's a little bigger than normal, but that's okay. It's perfectly good. One, one quick thing uh, to note in here for to clone the display, I had to go in here and select the capture card because it was set to way too big and make sure that you have all of your display resolutions set to 1920 by 1080. This will make it so that when you clone the display, it doesn't do the janky stuff that this here did. Uh, this is doing janky stuff on this here because I didn't have it set quite right. So definitely keep that in mind. Make sure that they're all the same size and click OK. I'm going to move this here back over to this screen and we're going to clone the display again. If you do end up running across a couple problems, make sure you select your display, make sure that they're on the right zooms. You will have to make sure that all your displays are set the exact same and make sure that they're double checked afterwards. I had to go through and fix my taskbar and a few things uh, right away. First thing I checked it because it changed the size of it up to a 4K and my monitor wasn't built for 4K. So I did run into a few issues doing that. So make sure you keep that in mind. It might take a little bit of fiddling with in here with the settings. You'll have to make sure that it's 100% uh, recommended. Uh, you, these are the just what I suggest for 1920 by 1080. It'd be different if you had a 4K passer and you're passing through 4K. But if you're at 1920 by 1080, make sure that it's at 100% recommended and your display resolution is 1920 by 1080. It should be cloned. So you can do it here in Windows as well by clicking the duplicate display. So you can you can click duplicate or extend display in here as well so that you can do the exact same thing in here as you, we did in the GeForce. It will just say duplicate desktop on to and that's it. Make sure that you select your 144 Hertz in your monitor and make sure that your main display is set to 144 Hertz. So I just wanted to make sure I covered that right quickly. Uh, just if you do have any problems at all, it does take some fiddling in the in the display settings. Go in here, make sure that everything's set correct, like your 100%, your 1920 by 1080, and make sure just make sure those settings are set correctly. Then we can just close out of that. This shouldn't have any latency at all when you clone your display because you can run like I just did. I set both of mine to 144 hertz. That's perfect. It's not like the past, so it doesn't have as much latency. Now, same as the other way, we are going to need to do the sound. So we are going to need to go in here, open the sound settings, click on the control panel, go over here to the recording tab, go into mix, click the properties, go into the listen tab, make sure listen to is clicked and make sure that you have the monitor selected that's going to the, so make sure that the AVT, 
make sure that that's selected or you won't have any sound. So make sure that's selected in your mixer so that your sound is going through to your stream computer. Okay, and if you did the first step or if you followed the first step, you'll know how to add it as a video source in OBS. So you should have all that all set up. Next, if you happen to be unfortunate and have something like an Elgato 60 before they came out with the 60 plus and you're hard capped at only 60 hertz, so you can only play at 60 hertz on your monitor, but you happen to have a 244 hertz monitor. And you probably, at, if you have that, you probably have the hardware to run it at the same time. So this is going to be a little bit the same as the last one. For this one here, we're going to have to plug the display port into the monitor and we'll want to plug the HDMI cable into the capture card. This should automatically extend your display. If not, right click the desktop, go to display, scroll down and click extend display. So we're going to go down here. We already did this from the last one. So we're just going to click on here and we're just going to extend desktops. Okay. This should revert the changes that we made and I'm going to keep the desktop. Perfect. Now, my screen that I'm, I can't see the screen. This is only showing in OBS. My front screen is over here. So what I'm seeing is over on the side. So I'll have to move everything over here. And while I'm doing that, I'll open my other OBS. Okay. Once everything is extended, uh, you can't really see what I'm doing. Uh, but once it's extended and it's over onto the other page, all we need to do from here, we're going to need to launch OBS. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to launch OBS. Now from here, we can put OBS on a different screen, but I won't be able to show you what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'll put OBS here and I'm going to right click this. I'm going to go down to full screen projector and I'm going to select the capture card. It should show up like a monitor. All you need to do is click and there. Now the second monitor is showing up on my first monitor. You would be able to put OBS on, let's, if you have three monitors, you'd be able to put it on the third one instead of where I have it on the first one and the second one. So you'd be able to put it on the third one and then preview the window over to that screen. So it's very easy to do that. I can show that example here while I'm recording. I'll go over there, close the full screen. I'll move OBS over to my main screen. I'll give it a right click, go down to full screen projector view and bam there now it's going to see the main screen so you can have obs on any screen and it's going to be sharing it to that screen as you can see and first thing i click close i have to actually scroll over to my third monitor it's a little bit weird but you have to go over to that monitor and click on it so it's different to see my i can see it here and then i move it over here and i can see it here too so it doesn't actually wrap around, that's just an effect. But like I said, you'll be able to view your OBS. You won't have to hide OBS over here on the window you won't be able to monitor. Uh, you'd be able to put it over on the other side if you needed to watch it, but I would just jam it over on the one you can't see and click preview because it's not like you're really gonna need this OBS. This OBS only ever needs to be a preview and nothing more. This will allow you to go through and set up all your frames. I'm gonna set this here as a preview. I'm gonna lock it to here. From here, we're definitely gonna wanna make sure that our monitor has got the right Hertz settings. So in your display settings, we can go all the way down and click on advanced display settings. In here, this will let you set your monitor to whatever Hertz it is. You can set your monitor to 144 Hertz. Yes, then you can go over here and select your display too. And you can just leave it at 60 hertz. You don't need to have it at 144 hertz or 120 hertz. Your stream will get a perfectly fine quality. And at the same time, you're going to get all the hertz you paid for. So if you have a 240 hertz monitor you just paid $1,000 for, you're going to have, you're going to be on the edge. This, this is how you play games competitively without any added latency. This will allow you to stream, record, and play your game without any load on your PC. Running just that preview window hardly will run anything on the computer. I have no problem doing it on a 1660. It's absolutely fine. So unless your hardware is really low grade, you might want to use pass through instead if you can't open OBS preview screen. But if you can do something as simple as open preview screen on the third window, you'll be set. Now you will have to leave the OBS running the whole entire time on the gaming PC while you're playing the game. But that should be fine. 
where you're gaming, but that should be fine. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like I said, it's not going to be doing very much work. It's only displaying a preview and nothing more. It's not encoding. It's not doing any work. So your streaming computer will still be doing all of the heavy lifting and you will have all the benefits of your monitor. So I hope that helped you out and got things set up a little bit for you. And this is the same as the last one as well. You will need to go into the sound, open the sound settings, go into the sound control panel, go to the recording tab, go down to the mixer, click properties, the listen to tab and make sure that you have the listen to click to listen to this device and make sure that you have your capture card selected like i said before if you don't have that selected you won't hear no sound from your games and stuff like that in your stream but after that set you're pretty much done you're good to go after that if you do have any problems there is a few things you're gonna have to fiddle with some things depending on which route you take the pass through is the the easiest way cloning your display does have some caveats there is a little bit of an issue i had with getting my screens to be the right size i had to make sure and i had to go through and change them all twice and i had options for hertz like i picked 144 hertz but it made my screen mess up a little bit and i had to change it to 120 hertz because my monitor only has 120 hertz options but my capture card tricks it and then it, it allows me to set it a little bit too high so your mileage may, may vary with each of these methods i find the last one probably is the best one even though it's probably the most complicated it only adds the extra load of obs but for that extra load, like I said, you're getting everything you can get out of your monitor. From that point on, after that, you should be all set to go. Once you have that there set up, whatever method you pick, one, two, or three, whether you're going with the pass-through, the clone display, or the preview window from OBS, all three ways work excellent. All have their use cases. But let me know what one that you're going to be using in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys end up using and going with and what one works best for you. But that's all there is to it, guys. I hope this here got you set up and going. And I hope this here made to streaming with a two PC setup a little bit easier. I know I did cover three different ways. But I definitely think that once you have one of those ways set up, it's really easy to replicate. And there's not that many problems. Once you have it set up, it's a set and forget. The only one that has a caveat with that would be the OB. Yes, you would have to remember to launch and preview that each time and you can do little bits of things like you can in the obs that you have on your gaming computer you could add in like instead of capturing your desktop you could capture your games so that you wouldn't capture your desktop so there's some of those things too that i didn't cover i will have to make a, vi a later video but that's all there is to it guys like i said i hope this here got you going and set up if you think i forgot or left something out definitely leave it in the comments below and if you like or found this video helpful hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content thanks for watching